Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. How to find the balance you need in order to live the life you want. And I can assume as a coach or consultant, your goal or life mission is to have a happier existence. And in you know, in you so doing that, you can then help others be, do, and have that happier existence. But I got a question for you. What if you could learn to believe that in your heart that your worth has nothing to do with what you accomplish? What if you could resist in, um, you know, being overly busy and you could actually rest in a deeper truth that you are a treasured human being, not a human doing. I mean, if you can imagine this shift, then you've taken the first steps towards a greater freedom. A lot of coaches, consultants, and small business owners are they are caught up in the busyness of trying to be everything to their customers and you know, constantly moving. And it's easy to feel like we're constantly going from one thing to the next, you know, from our tasks at work or at home to our responsibilities and commitments to our clients, um, you know, and uh, those that are around us that expect to hear from us and also having to show up on social media, like what other coaches think they have to do in order for their business to be profitable and enjoyable. And there's seemingly, um, you know, it seems like there's an endless demand to our time and attention. You know, we can only keep up this juggling act for so long. I mean, we've just been through a long pandemic that showed us that being constantly busy and being present 24 7 is actually detrimental to our actual health and i believe the pandemic was there to show us that we didn't need to show up every single time we didn't need to be there every single time for those people that didn't value our presence and soon A lot of your areas in your lives will actually begin to suffer if you neglect them in favor of other areas. It's one thing that I learned, um, you know, especially during the pandemic, that there are 10 interrelated domains, um, you know, of our well-being that we need to always be looking out for this is your spiritual your intellectual your emotional your physical rational your parental your social vocational and your financial i don't know if i mentioned 10 there that was just a lot and a mouthful you know our lives are more than our work they're more than our social lives outside of work in fact it's helpful to see our lives in terms of these 10 interrelated domains. If it's spiritual, you can watch a video from Eckhart Tolle and maybe just really understand that your ego, that you constantly want to feed, is the one thing that is actually um, limiting you from having a work-life balance so that you can feed into your parental um, domain where you need to be there for your kids. So, so many things are happening around us and we are missing out on filling out all of these buckets and we're just half-baked human beings, yet we expect our clients to show up in their best possible way so that they can be, do, and have, um, you know, a happy existence and eventually pay us. Let me tell you something. All these domains are connected and each and every one of them affects the others. So if you notice that your business is not fully functional, maybe it's something to do with your emotional domain. Maybe you're being too, um, you know, 
uh, you're not being there or present for your kids. Maybe your social aspect is missing out because maybe you're not networking enough, you know? Or maybe, for example, your physical condition actually impacts your work because you can't do well if you don't feel well. And your financial state will affect your social life because you can't show up, you know, if you can't afford the first drink. So to get the life that you want, you have to be touching at least all of these domains at any given time. And that's only then you can have the balance that you need, you know. And finding that balance begins with finding exactly where you are and how you're doing in, in each and every one of these 10 domains. I realized that my spiritual domain was lacking because my inner child constantly wanted to be heard. My ego constantly wanted to, um, you know, you know, be fulfilled. I want to help you create a unique position in the hearts and minds of your ideal clients so that they can, um, you know, so that they can't uh, wait to work with you and pay you what you're worth. Half of the time, our clients don't want websites. Our clients don't want tools, structures, or whatever it is. They just want a happier existence. Are you able to show them how to actually get that? Because at the end of the day, we're just showing up as busy bodies, doing, pushing paper and all of that stuff. Didn't the last two years really show you that all of this doesn't mean anything? And I'm, I've got a weird feeling that people have just gotten straight back into where they left off from. How many times just this week alone have you been asked, how are you? And maybe you just responded with a familiar, oh, yeah, I'm busy, you know, things are picking up, you know, or we are getting back to where things were before. Whatever happened to just the pet answer, you know what, I'm fine. I'm doing all right. You know, because our culture has become ridiculously busy. And as a consequence, many of us are suffering from what can be referred to an addiction to busyness. I read a LinkedIn post about somebody who broke down and cried like a baby in a fetal position while they were having a shower. And that is normal because their soul actually recognized that whoever their ego or the person they're presenting themselves as in the world is not who they're supposed to be. That person met their actual self and you know what they did well uh, they went on and wrote oh i went and saw a doctor and i was given antidepressants no we have become afraid to meet our real selves that means our spiritual domain is lacking we are afraid to meet our own self you know, I do this exercise every single day where I just sit on my table and I just listen to my heartbeat. Just boom, 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 and be present. And after that, I, I become fully energized and fully, um, you know, ready for the day. It's not just about being busy, busy, busy and making mistakes and actually not being productive. I mean, you may feel time poor and a little bit stressed out, but if you just stop and listen to your heartbeat, you might actually get intuition that will help you leverage whatever next job you were supposed to take on. But here's the kicker. For many of us, we are not too busy simply because we feel maybe the societal pressure or the need for better time management. It is because we are actually just addicted to being busy. We are all addict we're not crazy about the of if eat of its effects on our health or performance or well-being we just like the high of being busy and what that high gives us now let me share you with you you know four reasons why this addiction of being too busy is so powerful it's even more than crack you know because there's a feel-good chemical that hits you when you get stuff done. You know, when we were growing up as kids, we are always praised for getting something accomplished. Oh, my God, she can walk. Oh, great, you put a drawing. Uh, you know, that's a good painting. We always get that praise as kids whenever we accomplish something. And we take that with us as we become adults. It becomes an addiction because we're now wanting our parents, the world, society to give us a pat in the back for a job well done. 
on the outside, we feel that we are at our best when we are the busiest. At school, we are praised for completing work. We're not praised for thinking. We're com praised for completion. But the truth is that our brain is just rewarding our business with love, with, you know, that lovely ongoing dopamine hit. It's one of our brain's feel-good chemicals. And that way our brain, um, you know, works in, in, in so many times, you know, you know, so that when we succeed at something, the, the, that's how your brain stores the information that allowed you to do so well in the first place. And guess what happens? It keeps presenting you with information that will get you that dopamine heat again. Now you are addicted to the dopamine drug. So with each success, you get that dopamine hit and that follows into your brain's reward pathway, which is pleasure, learning and motivation, which gives us an even greater ability and motivation to do even more. I'm not surprised if you're motivated by our podcast. And if you really look at that, that's your dopamine hit each and every single day when you get that notification that a new podcast is up. And another reason why we're always trying to be busy is because busyness provides us with this wonderful illusion that we have as human beings that is called control. Did you notice why people went on to buy toilet paper at, um, you know, at the shops when things started, you know, going scarce? It's because they wanted to have something that they could at least control. And toilet paper happened to be, you know, the easiest thing that they could pick up from the shelves that they could control. And control is the number one human addiction. You know, when we feel like we're in control, it adds the high we get from, you know, getting stuff done. You know, if I have anxiety about money or world politics or my children or a whole host of other things I have no control over, I can reduce the experience of it by pretending to be busy. You know, I may not be able to solve global terrorism or racism or news of yet another shooting of another kid or another COVID outbreak, but I can get those 10 to 20 things checked off my to-do list. That gives me a sense of, oh my God, things are in control. But who are we fooling? The world is still out there and it still needs our expertise. And if we're going to show up with, um, you know, bags in our eyes, who's going to want to buy from us? You know, and half of the time we're afraid of checking in with ourselves. So being busy is a sure fire self-protection technique that consistently works. You know. In the book, Daring Greatly, uh, Bryn, Bryn, Bryn uh, Brown writes about numbing behaviors that we use as armor against vulnerability. And when we're too busy, it's a form of numbing. It's like taking a drug to just zone out. And um, Brown writes that one of the most universal numbing strategies is what I call crazy busy. Every time somebody tells you, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. It's just a way of checking out of the world. And I often say that when I start having, you know, 12-step meetings, um, you know, for, for, for busy alcoholics, they don't need to rent out football stadiums because there's a whole lot of people out there that cannot control this numbing uh, need. We are a culture of people who bought into the idea that if we stay busy enough, the truth of our lives won't catch up with us. Like I say, take a moment. Just breathe. And connect with your real self. Listen to your heartbeat. A lot of people can't do that. And a lot of people have switched off this podcast already. Good on you. Go on and be busy. Because no one judges you for your addiction. You know? Because everybody else out there is just thinking, oh, if I say I'm busy, then it makes me look like I'm doing stuff. I've only noticed this in the Western society because the Western society puts a high value on being busy. 
I mean, we are conditioned to believe that being busy equates with being good, being worthy, being successful. And in our world today, we don't even need to feel one bit of shame over how, um, you know, we make a choice to numb ourselves in order to accomplish something. And we don't even connect with ourselves just because we continuously hide behind being busy. And somehow other people see us as more valuable and as more, more worthwhile, you know, no matter what it does to our hearts and souls over the long run. In the past two years in the pandemic, a lot of coaches and consultants did not get any work. You know why? Because people were not stressed. How can we create, um, you know, you know, uh, economies out of stressed human beings? And if you're listening to this podcast up until this time, there's a good chance that there's a part of you that is probably waking up to the reality that as as good as, you know, as good as it can feel to be too busy, there's a definite, um, you know, uh, shadow aspect. You know your crazy business is making you feel burnt out and is having an impact on your health and happiness, on your finances on your being a relevant partner, a parent, a brother, a sister. The bottom line is you're probably starting to see that being too busy is simply um, not working anymore and you want a solution. I mean, while I can give you all these pet suggestions about saying no or maybe reducing your um, payload or workload or maybe playing out like a child, the best they can offer you is a moment of relief but let's face it, it is an addiction, all right? It's like telling an alcoholic that, it, you know, to take a nice bubble bath or relax on the beach instead of reaching out for a hidden bottle in the top shelf, um, you know, for whatever their favorite whiskey is. If you really want to over, uh, overcome, you know, your busy addiction, you have to accept that it's really an addiction. And that's the first point of call. And just relax into understanding and knowing that everything will be okay. Everything will be looked after. Surrender to your higher self. And you'll start noticing that everything will start taking place. Because from that place of acceptance, you can then surrender your addiction to a higher power. Because there's a very good reason why you have selected this method as a way to self-protect and it makes a lot of sense so if you want to transform your life and be a person of peace and joy and be helpful to the people around you because you know that whole statement of if you're in a plane uh, the first thing that you got to do is put your mask on first you have to naturally choose to relax and be at peace with not doing much. Relax at the back of your patio at the end of the day. Watch your sunset with your loved ones instead of trying to get that one last email in. You know, that whole zero inbox is, I don't know where people get that information from. You have to get completely serious about not just focusing on uh, changing you know, this whole self-protecting behavior by being too busy because this is what is drawing you towards burnout. And you can't be of any help to your clients if you can't actually uh, be there for them. Because underneath the business, the performance and the perfection, you know, leaves a painful wound of... It may be a myth that you believe in your heart about who you are and what value is linked to what you're doing. What if you could learn to believe in your heart that your worth has got nothing to do with what you accomplish? What if you could rest with the deeper truth that you are a treasured human being and not a human doing? You know? Everything that we're doing, everything that we are uh, putting out there in the world is designed to help us have a happier existence. And how are you going to be um, enjoying that existence if you're not feeling well? 
You know? How are you going to do that if your kids are not even enjoying or don't even know who you are as a parent? Because at the end of the day, we want to be there for our, you know, our audiences. You know, maybe maybe you are an entrepreneur that's married right now. You know, I'm speaking from um, the whole space that we live in. Because being a coach or um, um, consultant is a very exciting and challenging experience. There are new op- um, you know, opportunities to do creative work and work that you really find your purpose in and to grow as a professional. But for all the excitement, though, there are so many plenty you know, challenges, particularly ones that affect you when you're married or when you've got kids. Angela and I have experienced this, you know, ever since I started, you know, working in this business. Long hours, late nights, bringing work home, working on weekends can all cause a lot of strain. And that kind of stress can weigh on your marriage or on your relationships, even with your employees and with your colleagues for so long, you know, before something has to change. But the good news is, if you take steps towards this change, you would actually start having a happier existence. So how do you as a coach or consultant achieve your dreams without sabotaging your relationships um, or all the other modalities, your spirituality, your, you know, your you being a, a, a parent, a father, a sister, a brother? Because as an entrepreneur, you can really help those that are around you, your spouse and yourself by giving them, you know, the best awareness or the gift of awareness or the gift of inclusion and you being committed to actually seeing them through and having them uh, understand that you are available for when they need you. Because if you give those that are around you the gift of awareness, you're no longer just too busy. You can actually find um, information and tools and ways to actually help your clients by being aware of your surroundings. Because as hyper-focused, high achievers that we are as coaches and consultants, it's easy to see ourselves as the center of the show. And we don't learn anything if we're not listening to other people. But we're not. No matter how many accolades we've received in the success of us being busy, or maybe the work that we do, or the praise that we get, or the amount of money that we make doing it, we have to be aware of all the material and non-material contributions that you know those that are around us are making to our lives. If you are a parent, If your spouse is taking the kids away so that you can record a podcast like this, do you stop and praise them for the work that they're doing and affording you the opportunity for you to actually show up in the world? Because if you don't do that and if they don't get the praise, depending on the language of love that they speak, um, you know, or the language of love that they respond to, they're not going to keep doing it for you in order for you to be doing, have a happier existence. Or maybe they're giving you an opportunity to have your meetings since we're all now working from home or in some capacity in a space where our kids can disturb us at any minute. Are we giving them the gift of awareness, not just being too busy? If they're allowing you to work throughout the week, can you afford them some time, um, you know, during the weekend to just spend time with them and catch up with them and find out how they're doing? You know, I work with a lot of small to medium businesses where the husband and wife are working together in, in, in the business, right? Are you including your spouse or your team in decision-making processes in order for them to actually have something to talk about besides just the kids. You need to give people around you the gift of inclusion. Because if you invite your spouse or, um, you know, your sister, your family, your relatives um, into your business and making them feel included, it actually creates intimacy and builds trust and, and brings each and every one of us together. 
It doesn't necessarily mean hiring them. They might have an idea of how certain things were done, where they used to work or where they work, or they might know somebody who needs the services that you are um, delivering and they meet other people at the mom's groups or dad's groups that they go to. If we don't include them, how are we going to um, you know, bounce off ideas when we're talking to them on our coffee break or on our tea break? Even just receiving input or, uh, you know, you know, an opinion from them keeps our spouses or those that are around us in the loop and sets our marriages up for success. Because if we just continually be busy, 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 they're not going to understand what it is that we do and they're not going to, you know, have the empathy to, to want to help you in the future, you know. Because when you speak to someone, even if you know they don't understand accounting or they don't understand consulting, you listening to yourself speak or just putting information out there will help you um, be clarify your message and actually identify who the target audience is and really help you uh, reach out to mass markets out there. Because if we are enlisting those that are around us to help us, guess what? If you want to go far, you can go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. So by you, you know, you know, putting yourself in a whole bubble of being busy, a lot of people are going to be afraid to reach out to you or even ask you for an opinion on things that could help you create products for your other customers out there. Because when you talk to your spouse, she might have an example of a friend of hers who's going through stuff who you can then say, hey, why don't you reach out to her and we can help them with this. Or you can actually get clients in that way. Breathe. And I'm also glad that you're still listening because I'm thinking when I started talking about the spiritual stuff at the start of this podcast, a lot of people left. I, I heard the buttons being pressed, people leaving. I want to give you the gift of commitment. You know, given the risk of being a coach or consultant or any entrepreneur in endeavor, some of the most important words we can actually say are, or we can hear from those that we love are, maybe we're a team and we're in this together no matter what. If you listen to your uh, team members, if you listen to your suppliers, if you listen to your clients, you create a safe space and communicating that kind of commitment regularly to the people that are around you can actually get you and, you know, those that you want to create for and relate to go through almost anything. If we start creating safe spaces around us by just being committed to where we are headed to and showing people that we can give them space if they show up in our own space. Being busy does not um, help you connect with people like that. And once that is in place, you give people a gift of presence because this entrepreneurial life is full of ups and downs and unknowns. You know, to prevent things from going wrong, we can easily just go in and, you know, get that addiction to overworking. But oftentimes, it's just to overcompensate on things that are not working in our lives. You know why? Because we're addicted to that control. And that only ends up taking from our marriages or our relationships with our kids or our relationships with our employees and not giving to them. So instead, we can actually, you know, bless our spouses by realizing it doesn't all hang on our shoulders alone and deciding ahead of time not to shortchange our families as we build our businesses. As important as your physical or mental presence is at work, it also is at home even when you're showcasing or when you're delivering a presentation to your client. If you're not present, people can tell you are not doing this from from your heart. Because if you have a happy marriage, happy relationships, you're spiritually sound, your finances are in order, you will have the best ride in this entrepreneurial journey. Things might not be perfect, but experience has taught uh, me and my wife that it can get better 
if you invest in the relationships and not just being busy for busy busyness sake you know those 10 interrelated domains that i keep referring to your spiritual your intellectual your emotional physical relational parental social vocational and financial all of these buckets need to be filled at any given moment in our lives and if you're not doing that if you can imagine this shift then you've taken your first step towards greater freedom and i really really wish that for you bye for now thank you for joining us today if you have any questions let's continue the conversation in the live long digital community become a live long digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.